<laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Bolland. I, I love talking comics. You good? Do I look convincing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, as a kid, grew up on American comics. I was a fan of DC Comics, and I think my generation, me and Dave Gibbons, we were the kind of first generation of artists who, who were weaned on Marvel and DC Comics to work in British comics. Also, in those days, the, the, the very notion of, of people in England working for uh, the American comics was remote because we didn't have the means of communication in those days. That's what I mean. There's no email. There's there was, no. I mean, there was what, no how, how were you having to send it by plane uh, all the well, time? I mean, um, were you what, going out there? Or? Uh, I went out there quite often, but most of the time, I think fax machines had just been invented, right. which was very convenient because it meant that you know I could do my rough and I could stick it in the fax machine, and my editor could immediately see what it was going to look like. Right. And that was a first because they really only started being used in the, what decade was that? I guess that was the 70s. The 70s yeah. <laughs> I think I was one of the first of us lot to switch from working traditionally in ink on board to using Photoshop. I started doing that in 1997. Right. Um, wow. I haven't produced a piece of physical artwork professionally in 12 years or more. That's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and yet my work is still, uh, I mean, a lot of people say they can't tell the difference because it's all drawn on a Wacom tablet. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got to draw every line pretty much. Um, and, and so, I mean, my work, they, they often say that my work is very much the sort of classic, almost Silver Age uh, comic book style. And it's kind of strange that it's all done with the well, new you, you've blown me away. I mean, I'm sure you, a lot of our fans are going to be blown away by that as well. The fact that you know that you've you've completely switched out. Yeah. Well, I mean, at, I, I and, mean, and I I wouldn't have I honestly wouldn't have guessed. All oh, right. Well, I mean, artwork collectors are not very pleased with me, of course, <laughs> because they you know where's well, the artwork? Yeah, that's um, uh, yeah. But it's it's kind of sad. But uh, it does. There are all sort of, there are all kinds of things you can do on the computer. But people get the idea. That it, the computer does it for you. It does not. You you have to draw everything. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, just yeah. as you would anyway. Yeah. What have we got to look forward to, Brian? Um, well, at the moment, I've just. Uh, I mean, only last year I brought out my th uh, sort of 30 years of work for DC book. Wow. Um, Bit of Green Lantern in there. I'm a, I'm a Green Lantern fan, sorry. Yes, my very first work for DC was Green Lantern. Exactly. I wouldn't mind doing more of that, but uh, there's but some very good artists on Green Lantern yes, these days. Yeah. Patrick Gleason's very good, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they had all the blackest night and the brightest day, and they, it was they all did, didn't they? Yes, yeah, yeah. they did, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm doing the covers on a new Dial H for Hero book, which I think is going to be fun, because every cover is going to have a character on the front that no one's ever seen before. Right, wow, OK. Um, so, uh, as for what else I'm doing, I haven't quite decided yet, but well, what other stuff? If DC, if you're listening, Brian Bolland would like to do some more Green Lanterns. Sort it out, please. We want to see it. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just letting them know. Thank you. <laughs> With The Killing Joke, what inspired you to do um, the work the way it came out? Um, what inspired me? Well, I guess what inspired me is that... Um, back in those days, Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons, uh, Mick McMahon, uh, Kevin O'Neill, we were all good pals and we were all kind of destined to do something together in some form. Um, I was um, moving away from drawing D Judge Dredd and beginning to work exclusive, exclusively for DC. Um, and the fact that Alan was such a terrific writer, he was the man of the day, um, was obviously inspiration for me to, uh, to do what I did. Was, was there a strict structure by Alan Moore to how to make the, the images, or did you um, have quite a bit of well, choice creativity? Uh, about to begin it? with, well, it, I mean, it, it was really my project. You know, uh, I was asked by DC what I would like to do, and I said I'd love to do a Batman book, and I'd love it if Alan Moore wrote it. And Alan said, "Okay." I think there's a lot of people that would probably yes. <laughs> I mean, say that. Wasn't I fortunate? Uh, as for the um, the layout and structure of the story, he had just recently done Watchmen, which was done on a strict nine-panel grid. So we did have a bit of the nine-panel grid going on in the Killing Joke, although we broke out of that a lot more often than than, than Dave did in in Watchmen. So. Um, Alan asked me what sort of thing I had in mind, and I said to him, look, I'd really like it to be a Joker book uh, with Batman as like a kind of in almost an incidental character, and, and he went along with that, I think, because it was the origin of the Joker in the end. As, as to the writing of the story, of course, you know, being Alan Moore, I left him 
to get on with it. I, I, I didn't interfere in any way. What would you say to say any other American creators who haven't seen uh, what's going on here about coming over to the UK and being part of the LSEC next year? Well, from what I've seen of the American creators here, they seem pleasantly surprised. You know, there's a lot of interest in them because there haven't been big conventions in this town or this country for a, a while, not like the big American ones. So I'd recommend it to any of them. Fabulous.